You probably remember Maven for being the first winner of Tough Enough back in 2001, but in 2023, he became the undisputed champion of wrestling YouTube. In this video, we're gonna dive into how Maven used completely organic YouTube SEO practices to grow its channel to over 100,000 subscribers in only four months, only to still commit one of the biggest mistakes that nearly all aspiring YouTube creators also commit. This is Kirk Collins. Welcome to Video SEO Club. So when you go to the channel homepage for Maven Hoffman on YouTube, you'll see here that uh, he has a trailer, which is about four months old. Not bad. 1.6 million views on that. But then you look and there's no playlist listed here, which is kind of weird. We see shorts. Now you need to understand something from a YouTube SEO standpoint. Most people that will land on your YouTube channel page will come from your shorts. So showcasing your shorts on the channel homepage with no other playlist that showcase your long form content is really bizarre. Now clearly this has not been super detrimental to Maven because he does have 162,000 subscribers and he's really only been pumping this for four months. Now we see he has one link featured here. We have Instagram and we also have Facebook. I do not understand from a monetization standpoint what Maven's actually offering here. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the description's not that important, but it's great that he has one. 162,000 subscribers, only 33 videos, 13 million channel views. Now he joined back in 2014, but he's really only been active at this for the last four months. No banner image, clearly that doesn't matter. People fixate on that banner image a lot of times, but as we see in the case of Maven, doesn't really matter. So if we look up the search term Maven Huffman, we see that he's getting about 47,000 searches per month with a difficulty to rank of about 47%, which is about medium. Now, just like anyone would probably suspect, Maven's ranking number one for Maven Huffman. It is his full name, it's the name of his YouTube channel, makes sense. Now, as you scroll through the search results here for Maven Huffman, you see that he's ranking. It's, it's his channel everywhere. You even see his community tab featured right there. You don't see really anything else from any other channels until you scroll way down here. WWE posted this video 11 years ago of Maven in the Royal Rumble. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's, it's all Maven's content. So he's doing some really good branded SEO here, basically protecting his name. So he's doing great. Now, Maven was not known as Maven Huffman when he wrestled in WWE, so most people are probably typing Maven in when they're searching for him. And that phrase right there gets about 89,000 searches per month with a 48% difficulty to rank. And that's not that much harder to rank for than Maven Huffman, so my suspicion is that most people are typing in this phrase rather than his full name. And again, no surprise, when you look up Maven by itself, which is what probably most people are typing in when they're looking for his content, uh, you'll notice that Maven is dominating this as well. The only difference is, is this one here, uh, where post-rock dwells, that's not about wrestling. We see a little anime video here, weird dinosaur. Jim Ross on the talent of Maven. Now, it's quite likely that Jim Ross was made aware of Maven's dominance on YouTube, as we can see right here. JR shares his thoughts on the resurgence of Maven. Well, he's not ranking that great for this, but he has gotten a lot of views on this video. 31,000 views in only two months. So uh, JR was smart to put out this content about Maven. And if you look at Maven WWE, that gets about 15,000 searches per month. And it's a little bit more difficult uh, for such a small term to rank there with 47% competition versus just Maven alone at 89,000 searches per month. 48% competition. Even when we search Maven WWE, you'll notice Maven is dominating the search results. He is really protecting his branded SEO. Again, we see Jim Ross pop back up. We see the WWE channel pop back up right there. But for the most part, it's just Maven. We see a random one here, uh, Orton is God. <laughs> Uh, with Triple H, but for the most part, this is all from Maven's channel. Now, Maven's doing something really interesting with his titles on YouTube, and he's really one of the few creators that I've ever seen be successful with this. You'll notice here, he is not using his name in any of the titles. And why doesn't he have to do that? Well, the name of his channel is Maven Huffman. We see that right here. So that's kind of implied. He features himself on every thumbnail, so that's implied. What he's done is he made it look very personal with these titles, which is actually very intelligent. The antithesis of what most YouTube creators do, especially uh, wrestling creators. But you'll see here, if we sort this by the most popular videos, rating WWE wrestlers I worked with. Now that's a pretty general title, you know? We don't know who's the I, but we know that because of the thumbnail and because of the name of the channel. So that's a very 
uh, well-crafted title right there. That's why he's got 1.6 million views with it. How much money did I make as a WWE wrestler? Right there, that's quite the topic. I would imagine that quite a few wrestlers, especially mid-carters, they're not going to want to reveal how much money they made, but... We see Maven has uh, no problem putting that information out there, which is very different than most of the content that we see former wrestlers producing for YouTube. So that one did quite well. And we look at the day I got fired from WWE. How many wrestlers really want to talk about that? He was very smart by doing the thumbnail that way and also just titling it that. You have Vince McMahon going nuts the day I got fired from WWE. Again, it does not have really any SEO in that title other than WWE. And Maven's really the only YouTube creator since I've started doing these YouTube channel reviews that I've seen be able to leverage that. We've seen RFK Jr. try to do it in that review video. He failed miserably at that RFK Jr. did. 441 for his own name until he changed the name to his channel. I wonder where he got that idea. But Maven's actually been able to take those first person terms and uh, make them work for him. So I have no advice for these titles. The man's doing excellent. And while we're in here, let's just take a look at some of these thumbnails because Maven's doing an excellent job with these thumbnails. His expressions, right here, you know, he's rating WWE wrestlers I worked with, and he has two of the most iconic wrestlers featured in that thumbnail right there. Uh, down here, rating wrestlers I worked with too, Again, two very iconic wrestlers represent it. It's actually sparking people's imagination to get them to click. Who would think that Stone Cold Steve Austin is shy? And most of us will think that Brock Lesnar is probably scary. We're wondering if uh, maybe Maven got sent to Suplex City or something. And right here, the truth about being a WWE wrestler. You see we have uh, Roman Reigns in the background there. It's Maven sitting inside of a locker room. It's really uh, intelligent the way he's designed these. Wrestlers who hated me. And you see some people who may not have liked Maven there. The elements that Maven's putting inside of these uh, thumbnails is spot on. Spot on. Textbook YouTube SEO. Now, I understand that a lot of people probably don't consider the thumbnail part of the SEO, but it is. I really love this wrestler's court. That's from five days ago. 200,000 views in five days. Maven holding court, kind of dressed like a judge. And it's modern wrestlers. So it's really smart that he did that because you're going to go ahead and touch on the old school wrestlers who've already engaged with a lot of Maven's content. Plus, you're going to touch that new school audience who maybe identifies with an Alexa Bliss more so than badass Billy Gunn that we see over here. Great job, man. Keep doing what you're doing with these thumbnails. They're very clean. They're very engaging. And they're definitely contributing to the massive growth that Maven's experienced in only four months. So Maven does not have a whole lot of shorts, as you can see right here. This is his entire uh, catalog of shorts, but each one is done pretty well. 240,000, 229,000, 337,000. Now Maven's long form content does so well that he doesn't necessarily need shorts to support them, but I would say he should still do it. He should do more shorts. And this is his latest one right here, 30,000 views. He did that just in three days. Yes, he did the related video. So it'll take you to this video, you know, if you watch the short, which is smart. Clearly, long form is, is better for all YouTube creators, if you ask me. And you're already dominating with that, but put the shorts out, you know. He's actually one of the few people that uses the community tab right. And I only seen one instance here where Maven used it incorrectly. But let's go down, you know, three months ago, just sharing some photos here. And he's getting the engagement. You can see the engagement he's getting. 3.4 thousand likes, 183 comments. And I'm going to show you the one mistake that he made on the community tab is this right here. You never share a video to your community tab. You might wonder why. Well, let's take a look. He shares a video, 23 comments, 437 thumbs up. I don't even know why YouTube allows people to share videos to the community tab. Because it's like a cement block for engagement. It, it does nothing. Maven's channel is hyper-engaged. And the fact that he only had 23 comments on this post and 437 thumbs up, when right here below it, 12,000 thumbs up, 686 comments should show you. Never share your videos to the community tab. At least not that way. This is how you should be sharing your videos to the community tab. Maven shared one of Booker T's videos here. I bet you Booker T got a lot of traction off this. And that's from three weeks ago. He shared an image and he put the link. I would have put the link right here above all this text because the link's the most important thing. You gotta understand when you're trying to get people to click things, whether it be on YouTube, a website, social media, 
you got to put that link first and foremost above everything else. Don't worry about any of this. Yeah, people might read it. You want that link at the top. 4,000 thumbs up, 146 comments, simply because he shared an image and a link rather than sharing a video and a link, which is clearly not the way to do it on a community tab. I'm seeing one of the few ways that Maven's actually monetized this channel outside of YouTube ads is by promoting this Major Bendy's uh, action figure. It's a little unclear to me how he's monetizing this channel outside of the YouTube uh, partnership program. And it actually sent me on a LinkedIn deep dive that we'll touch on a little bit later at the end of this video. But all in all, Maven's doing excellent on the community tab. So one of the places where countless creators on YouTube fall short is in the comments section. Now let's see if Maven's following that toxic trend. Let's take a look at his most popular video. 3,500 comments, almost 3,600 comments on this video. Let's sort this by newest first. So he's, he's getting comments 23 minutes ago. He got comments on this, but let's sort by top comments and see if Maven actually replied to any of these. No Maven on this one on the top comment. And another thing that's uh, missing from this is where's the pinned comment? Man's trying to sell those uh, major bendies action figures. We should see a pinned comment right here. But you know, maybe Maven didn't do that four months ago, but maybe he's doing it now. So let's sort by latest and uh, kind of check out this one from two weeks ago and let's see what he's doing in the comments here. This has got 1200 comments and look at that front and center, five replies. Thank you for the compliment, means so much. Good on you, Maven. You're engaging your audience. You're doing what most YouTube creators are just not smart enough to do. Scroll down here, nine replies, there's Maven. Again, showing love to his audience, man. Doing a great job with it too. I would implore Maven to go back to that old video there from four months ago, which is doing still well. I mean, it got a comment 23 minutes ago. Jump in there and do the pinned comment. Right here, I'll show you how to do it, Maven. Boom, right there. That's all you gotta do. You're gonna sell a lot more of those major bendies that way and maybe some other offers that you might think about doing in the future. So now we'll look at how often Maven's gone live on YouTube. At least he's gone live. It's only been three times, but each time has been pretty successful for him. We see two months ago he got 46,000 views. We see a month ago he got 57,000 views. And we see 14 hours ago he got 31,000 views. So it seems like this is a monthly thing for Maven. Now let's jump into this most recent live stream and uh, see what he did in the chat. So if we go in and take a look at the top chat reply, uh, let's see if Maven uh, has some people jumping in chat. Now, it's not as important for Maven to actually jump in this chat because he's literally referencing the questions that are being asked during his live stream. That's the whole point of this. So he's monitoring it verbally by looking at it. So we don't see him really jumping in here saying anything in the YouTube chat, but it's actually a direct ask me anything type situation where he's engaging his audience, which is even better than jumping in and having somebody monitor your chat room. One big missed opportunity that Maven did not do, from what I could see, he did not share that link to the major bendies here. I mean, come on, it could have been right there, Maven. You could have been selling more action figures right there in your chat. Maybe Maven isn't looking to make money with this YouTube channel, which I'm speculating based on my findings through a LinkedIn deep dive that we'll touch on at the end of this video, but I still see it as a missed opportunity. I mean, you're doing great with YouTube. You got 31,000 views on this. That's engaged views. You got 187 comments on this in 14 hours. Come on, man. Pin the comment. Let's get it there. Now through the power of vidIQ, we'll take a look at the stats on Maven's channel. Let's see how he's done in the last month. So in the last month, Maven's a little bit down, 17%. That's not bad though, because he was able to achieve 2 million views. So yeah, he's down 17%, but 2 million views. He put out eight videos in that time frame, and he uh, gained 13,000 more subscribers. I'll say the last three months, because Maven's only been really active on YouTube for the last four months. So let's see uh, what his trajectory looked like. Eight million views in the last three months. 86,000 subscribers in the last three months. 22 videos published in that time period. Last seven days, Maven got 353,000 views. 2,000 new subscribers and five videos published. Maven's doing great, which kind of made me a little bit suspicious. 
because I don't see how he's monetizing this other than this uh, wrestling figure that was only available until November 17th. I know I kept saying, post this link, Maven, get it out there, because really it's the only thing that he's ever offered. The figure is no longer for sale. But other than this wrestling figure, I really did not know what Maven was monetizing this channel with. I, there's no pinned comments. He's making ad revenue, I'm sure. Clearly, he's getting half a million views in, in a week, so he's, he's making some money off of that for sure. But it's just baffling to me that he's not selling t-shirts. He's not even linking Cameo here. Even when you check out his Instagram, which he does link on his YouTube page, it, it's really uh, just content. I, I don't see any links to anything. He, he doesn't even have his YouTube channel linked correctly here, but that's fine because, I mean, he's, he's getting engagement here on uh, Instagram as well. He's got 17,000 followers. Baffling to me as a YouTube marketer that he's not trying to, to push maybe a Cameo. He's not trying to push t-shirts. So that sent me on a deep dive to LinkedIn to see how Maven's making his money these days. But we're taking a look at Maven's actual LinkedIn page. And he's got 500 connections. And it looks like he's been very active in the financial sector. So right now he's an account manager at this company. Now I'm not trying to dox Maven. I mean, this is public information. I'm just the kind of guy who sees a successful YouTube channel... And I don't see them fully leveraging the monetization potential of that channel. And it's, it's bizarre to me. It's foreign to me. I'd implore Maven, get on Pro Wrestling Tees. Get on Cameo. Leverage that thing, man. Because you got a machine that's pumping views and subscribers, engagement. And yeah, I mean, I understand it might just be a hobby. But there, there's nothing wrong with having a self-sustaining hobby by bringing in some revenue from it. And I really think you're missing opportunities there, Maven. I wish you the best. You're doing amazing. It's, it's encouraging to see somebody grow so fast in only three months. You're doing quite a few things right. I'd say I'd give you a, a, an A, but you got to get that A plus, man. Share some monetization links. You might be able to quit your day job, man. And maybe you don't want to. Maybe you're more passionate about the financial sector. and That's fine. I'm not making a judgment. You should do what makes you happy. Everyone should. But it, it's such a missed opportunity to not be leveraging those views in a way that could be monetized outside of the YouTube partnership. So that's my two cents. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe. I'll be doing a lot more videos like this, full reviews of YouTube channels. If you have any questions about YouTube SEO or you'd like for me to look at your YouTube channel, go ahead and comment on this video and I'll take a look. I also have a Facebook group that you can check out and a Quora page where I answer questions about YouTube SEO regularly. You can find that in the description of this video. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Video SEO Club.